So I could start this like any other YouTube channel. Start by saying welcome to, but kind of doesn't work when I don't actually have a channel name. So, so. Mostly this is just for my personal record, so my brain can have a break from remembering everything about every one of my many, many project arts. Um, a lot of this is just me bugging about in a workshop with way too many projects and basically yeah didn't know what still was on so I thought I might as well record something so I had a camera I had cards YouTube exists why not so probably should start no nope. let's try it again <laughs> So I should probably start with a lay of the land sort of video, I suppose. Or blog. Blog? Um, ultimately I have at the stage four or five projects on the go because I am useless at doing one at a time. So right now I have this one for Rover 2000, a Rover Three and a half V8. I don't know if you can see it. You can't see it. I also have a Mitsubishi Celeste, and then I've also got two Mitsubishi GTOs. All of them have weird, wonderful, somewhat wacky ideas to do with them, and that's basically why I need to record it because I'm not going to remember any of them. Starting off with the Rover 2000 behind me, it's a 1969 model. Um, God, it's on the clock, lots. Um, the current plan with it, due to unforeseen circumstances of buying it from a barn, is the original engine is more locked up than if it was made out of one piece of metal. Well, the pistons, it's just a solid lump of metal. So, I thought I might well put something else in it. So my plan is to put a Toyota 3SG engine out of an Arteza, along with a six-speed man box, and the whole wire harness. Because, you know, you start having a car to pull apart and you get a bit over enthusiastic, I suppose. Either way, that's the plan for this one. Next project is this Rover 3.5 litre. So you'd also notice it says B6 like 2000. Kind of bought 2000 with a part scarf for this one and got distracted. Probably the only way I can describe that. So, this car now has a 4.6 Rover V8 in it, which I rebuilt a few months ago um, to replace what was a Rover 39 out of a Land Rover that had replaced the previous 3.5 that was in the car and I brought it that wasn't the right engine for the car anyway. Um, the original four speed out of this has been politely asked to leave due to the lay shaft requesting it. Mostly while making lots of weird windy crunchy noises. So that had to go. So it's now got a full T5 gearbox out of a Nissan 300ZX or ZX, if you don't you know, pronounce it like that. I don't, but you know, keep everyone happy. Uh, the current layer player of this one is, it's actually road legal. Amazing. Been one of my cars. The major issue is now I've changed the engine to making 
probably twice that of what the three I was making just being so knackered. The clutch in it is now not happy with that. So the job of this one is to pull the engine box back out again, you know, they just got in there and place the clutch. Thankfully, because it's all missing gearbox, it's got a missing clutch in it, which makes it cheap and available. Uh, apart from that, this thing needs a new van roof because I had to pull it up for repairs, for you guessed it sort of things. Rust, my biggest nemesis. Apart from that, this is a nice little car and fun. So, car number three. This here is my 1981 Mitsubishi Celeste GSR model. Uh, it originally, when I bought it, had no engine, no interior bolted in, and it came purely as a rolling shell with bits. Um, I already owned at the time a 1977 Celeste in a beautiful orange colour. Well, it was actually two shades of orange. One was nice orange paint, the other shade was orange rust with holes. It looked like a block of Swiss cheese and could stay. So, again, bought this as a parts car, went down, picked it up, sight on scene, which was the thing about me buying cars, and it was too clean. So, right now I am having the only rust in the entire body, which is on this screen because some point only it's like it had a brand new new quick rear quarter wing put on it which was never bust proof on the inside so it then sees it busting out so just had this top cap made by a now new friend thank you very much and i'm on here poorly this is probably your first example of why i am not a mechanic and why I'm doing this fun more than a job. My body sucks. As does my kind of meeting. My ideas are too extreme. And ultimately I'm really bombing after much better on my hands. And to read projects. Which seems I have no time on my hands. Reasoning. Now moved into a very echoing back unit I have. Uh, this here is one of the two GTOs I have, it's officially called GTOs. It's probably my nicest looking car, purely due to the fact that before I bought it, someone painted it and put glass on back of it. Other than that, it's probably just much the project as ever car. The current state of this one is long term storage. With piece of rattling off of it, really. Um, I bought it close to two and a bit years ago, and I bought it purely because it is, as far as I can tell, a very good rust free GTO. In it currently, it has a two litre single can truck engine, for what I understand. Probably out an L200 L300 Mitsubishi truck. Um, Fast speed manual behind it, again, standard stuff. Uh, so it's got standard interior, it's got all the bumpers, got all the trims with it. The previous owner has relocated the battery into the boot for reasons I'm not 100% sure of because the engine is no bigger than the standard engine. Uh, Again, it's one of those products that I would mean to get to and never got around to doing. And it's just generally sad. Sad. Oh well. As and when. Oh. This here is my... Maths. Fifth project. I've got way too many of these. It is once again another Mitsubishi GTO. Body. I picked this up from a guy about an hour north of me um, who had it kicking around for a while, threw it on Facebook Marketplace, and I bought it within about 30 minutes of seeing it. 
it was up for a good price, and it was something I've always wanted. This I bought this one before I bought the green GTO. May have made a bad decision, don't know. It's relatively solid front to back, but it needs one of everything in terms of actually doing it. When I brought it, it came with a, again, a two meter twin carbed, kind of the original engine, but about two years later, which was also available in the Mitsubishi Celestes, um, as well as a, sort of that age sports cars. The plan with this one has actually already started due to me having it in storage and it being anywhere near my father, who is also mad when it comes to projects. So this one is going to be getting a V6 from a Mitsubishi 380, which if you're not from New Zealand or Australia, is basically a Damant with a 3.8 litre single rivet cam, four bath and a V6 engine, which is designed to compete with the Holdens and the Fords over there, so it's a big car. So I thought I might as well slap it into a small shell, because you know, what else would you do? Uh, behind it, I have managed to mount a six speed manual, which may or may not hold the power, I haven't even tested it yet, and that came out of a Great Wall Ute, so a V200 series truck. Again, it came up and trade me marketplace one or two for good money, and for a 6B I thought it was worth trying it. So yeah, that's currently the lay of things. Also, yes, I tell more continuity is why it's now magically up, whereas before it was magically closed. Basically, this is the default position of this bonnet. Along with most of the bonnets on my cars, is open. And if they're not open, only the boots open because I ain't got that problem at all. You know, generally, everything is open at some point on my cars. It was just the way of life. Right. Time to do some welding. The other thing that might be quite common in videos is me walking around aimlessly doing my best John Travolta impression of where? Because I am brilliant at me losing stuff. Right. Time to make the panel square. Nothing more annoying than a panel that is a gap on it. Grrr. Right. Back to finding earmuffs. Just like Nick, the grind was also my favourite tool. The 
one drawback of battery tools. The batteries run out. And my solution, a bigger battery. Take two. Also, if you haven't worked this out already, this is the first time I've ever done videoing. Try my YouTube video slash a blog. And yeah, try and make your car for reasonable. I probably suffer this. crater or a small valley but the road and it's starting to get again okay. it's not perfect but it's definitely getting more close to a single piece of metal rather than two pieces of metal bubbled together. At this stage I'm actually waiting on the batteries for the grinders to recharge because battery grinders they're wonderful in the sense I can take them anywhere and use them anywhere. The downside is the fact that they eat batteries. Look, nothing else I've ever used. It goes, ooh, battery, yum, yum, yum. And it's gone. So, I'm waiting. It's going to be a little while. Three of the batteries. Try to charge sometime soon. So, I guess that's probably the end of the first video. God knows how long it's going to be after I've finished editing it, probably about you know, 20 odd minutes long. Um, really, what I've got to do for the next one is work out a name for a channel, I guess. Wacky Cars Are Us. Would be descriptive enough. Anything. I'll probably leave it here. Call it a day. And hopefully be back with another video soonish. Okay.
again, the plan with them is just to sort of video what I'm doing, video what I've done things, because what I do things like the thing about and keep myself as well as you guys informed of where things are at. You know, as I said, like if you like it, dislike if you dislike it, and leave a comment, leave criticism, tell me what I'm better, apart from getting a decent microphone, a decent camera, because you know, they may all happen. My own cars, not on cameras. But we'll see. Ah. How? Side note. Note to myself cover the sodding window before you weld. It is a bugger after the fact to clean out all the bits of metal stuck in glass. Cool.